so today we're going to be asking the question, what would happen if everything in the NHL just went boom? And they decided that they were going to have a complete fantasy draft, meaning every player was available, every team got a pick. That's what we're going to be finding out in today's video. So that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to do a full season simulation on simulation settings and uh, basically just let the computers pick and play and see how it goes and see what happens. So before this video starts, definitely be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section of who you think is going to come out the Stanley Cup champions. It could be anybody. This is not going to be the way the draft is. I'm going to randomize this three times. So one, two, and three. So we are actually the Calgary Flames. We're going to be picking 20th. Detroit is the first overall pick. Let's go ahead. We'll see you after the draft is done and uh, we'll be looking at the teams. Okay, so how did this happen? I have no idea. Alexander Ovechkin and Crosby are both on the Anaheim Ducks. They have Cam Atkinson, Ryan Johansson, Max Pacioretty. So a very good forward core. Defensively, they're kind of lacking. As you can see, they definitely stacked up on the forwards there. And in net for the Ducks, Pecorine is their starter. So definitely going to be an insane team with Ovi and Crosby playing together. So the Coyotes chose to take Mark Shifley first overall. And uh, they got Duchesne there, Kerfoot back. Um, so yeah, you know, not bad. TJ Oshie defensively, uh, Brody and Petrangelo. So they have a decent defensive core. Who do they got in net? Tuka Rask. So the Boston Bruins decided they were going to go get Patrick Kane and Bo Horvat. Um, and Dadanov, I guess too, you could consider him a top level player. After that, it kind of falls off, but you know, that's kind of how it goes. Some teams do really good for drafting. Some don't. Uh, the first defensive pairing though is really good in Dumba and Jones, and they have probably the best core that we've seen so far with Corey Crawford and Nett. So not a bad team for the Bruins. Buffalo Sabres up next, and they decided that they were going to get the Vancouver duo of Pedersen and Besser and, uh, pull Brandon Sod along for the way. Um, yeah, you know, not bad. They're pretty average. Their core is good. Uh, defense. Defensively, they're not good though. Holy crap, with uh, Chitrin being their best defenseman, that is not a good look. And ooh, yikes, they got Koskinen in that. That's a very bad goaltending thing. They're probably not going to do very well. So, Carolina went ahead and got Ryan O'Reilly, Nick Ellers, and Debrinkat for a first line. So, that's not bad. You know, they're pretty deep too, forward core wise. Uh, defensively, they're not bad either. I would say they have an average defensive core there. And in net, anti Ranta and UC Soros. So, next up is the Columbus Blue Jackets. They got Debrus, Granlin, and Rantanen. So, that's a crazy first line. Nolan Patrick's going to be very good and Andrei Sveshnikov so they have players for the future so that's what they were thinking going into the draft uh, defensively they have a really good defensive core too and Velacic and Smith is a very good pairing uh, Matt Murray and Mike Smith in net you know Mike Smith he's probably going to be a decent backup but I wouldn't be wanting to start him next up is the Chicago Blackhawks Jamie Ben Braden Shen and David Posternak is a really good first line they decided that they were going to get Nick Schmaltz back and as well with Anthony Duclair um, you know pretty well it's about an average forward core defensively about an average decor and in net they have you know a little bit lower than average goalies but I would say overall pretty average of a team Colorado how the hell did they manage Brad Marchand and Steven Stamkos with Evander Kane that is going to be a lights out first line but they do fall off after that having a weaker core in the forward category uh they get pareko after that their defense really ain't that great and who do they have in net henrik lundquist and mike di pietro so the dallas stars went ahead and got johnny goudreau nico heischer and jason zucker so they took goudreau first and i'm guessing they went defense after that yeah tory crew ryan ellis that's a really good pairing um, so you, yeah, I would say probably about it. Oh, yikes. Mike Condon is their starter. That's gonna, that's gonna come back and bite him in the ass. I can just almost guarantee Next that. up, the Detroit Red Wings get, they did have the first overall pick. So they have Connor McDavid, Elias Lindholm, and Kyle Connor. That is a sick first line. They're very deep. Holy crap. Mike Hoffman, Henrik, and, uh, Nemestikov, um, Brennan Peary, Ryan Strom, and, uh, Matinas Yanmark. Yeah, they're they're freaking they're a deep team. Holy crap, Yandel Prover. Oh my, the Red Wings came out really good. Peter Morazic and Nets. So that's the one thing they are lacking. They're like, yeah, we're we're just gonna get all the players. Hopefully they score us enough goals. So Edmonton takes John Tavares and Nino Nina Ryder, as well as Sean Couturier, Josh Bailey, Zibby, and Marcus Johansson. So you know, not a bad forward core there for Edmonton. This might solve your problems. Uh, who do they got in that though? Carey Price. So they're like, you know what? We haven't had a goalie for so long. We're going ahead and getting so them. Florida. Artemi Panarin ends up going there, and that's about it for forwards. Holy crap, they really didn't draft that well. What do they have defensively? You know, McAvoy and Jarmelson, and then after that, they got Quinn Hughes. After that, it kind of def it like really falls off. Holy crap. 
Freddie Anderson and Nett, yeah, they might be a playoff team, but I think like just barely. Like their forward is like mid mid range depth, and then really falls off on the fourth. So line. the LA Kings next get Patrice Bergeron, Matthew Kachuk, and Jonathan Duran. So that's a really good first line for them. They have Pavelski centering two, which is a really good <laughs> number two center. Uh, defensively, they have you know pretty well an average decor there. Rasmus Dillon and Martin Jones and Nett for them. So they could probably also be a uh, I would say a playoff team. Minnesota Wild get Tyler Sagan, Victor Arvidsson, Jaden Schwartz, and and they are pretty well an average team depth wise forward core uh defensively yossi and kevin shat and Kirk there is their first pairing john gibson and net so honestly the, these guys could also be a playoff team too just all depends on how well everything clicks together for uh them. the montreal canadians so they really don't have a stud on forward they have barzell who's going to be a stud william nylander who is also probably going to be a stud and i don't know why i said nylander it's nylander and sam reinhardt uh, so you know it's not terrible like jack hughes as well like it's definitely interesting they have sveshnikov down there uh defensively they're about average who they have a net mark andre Fleury. that's not going to last you long and i don't think they have any goaltending prospects might not be good for montreal so next up is the new jersey devils jake gensel kachir and jbr so you know and they're not bad they've got like a couple older, older guys on the team they have a couple younger guys so they might be good going forward uh, defensively, Victor Hedman is going to be a huge help for them in Oscar Clefbaum. That's a really good first pairing. And Jimmy Han Howard and Kadobin and that might be their Achilles heel. Nashville up next, Kyle Palmieri, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Alexander Radulov. So, yeah, you know what? They're not terrible. They're, I would say, like, again, like, they have a very strong depth, so that might come in handy for them. Defensively, they first two pairings are absolutely lights out. That's really good. Uh, definitely one of the better defensive pairing, defensive cores we've seen. Robin Leonard might be able to steal the show for them, and they might have a really good year. So the Islanders up next, and it's uh, Drysyle, Kovalchuk, and Ra Raquel. Like, that's about it. That doesn't really look great. Ryan McDonough, I guess their defense is, is above average. They have 80s across the board for defense. John Quick and Nett, so hopefully he can hold it down. So New York him. Rangers are next. They have a crazy first line. Phil Forsberg, Sean Monaghan, Vladimir Tarasenko. That is really good. Um, and they kind of fall off, fall off after that, as you would expect with a crazy first line. Uh, defensively, yeah, they're above average defensive core. They could definitely use a left defenseman, though. That would definitely help them out. And Jacob Markstrom in next. I don't know. I don't know how the Rangers are going to do. So the Ottawa Senators went ahead and pissed off all the Toronto fans out there, and they took Mitch Marner and Nazim Kadri. Now, Kadri is a Colorado Avalanche now, but uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. As well as Phil Castle, you'd bring the band back together. Didn't work for Toronto. Why wouldn't it work in Ottawa? But again, they're deep. They have good players. Like, this team could be very good. Gostas Baron Chara, Manson, DeKaiser, like they have a good decor as well. And then Bishop and Nett, Ottawa might be scary. So the Flyers are like, you know what, we're keeping Drew. Uh, we're going to go get Line A to play next to him. So again, the Flyers deep in the center position, that's for sure. Um, Keith and Latang is going to be a good pairing. Petrie and Broden, also a good pairing. Who do they have in net though? Bavrovsky. So the Flyers, if they can score goals, I think their defense can hold it down for them. So Pittsburgh up next, and they got Landeskog, Eichel, and Riley Smith, Kyle Turris, and Josh Anderson on the second line. They kind of fall off after that for immediate impact since we're only doing one season or uh, one season simulation. Um, defensively, really good. Jake Muzzin, J uh, Jacob Slavin, PK or PK Subban. I thought I was going to call him something else. Um, yeah, defensively, they have a really good core there, and uh, Carter Hart and Nett, so hey, Pittsburgh could pull off something amazing. San Jose is going to have Toivo Teravainen and, and Nate McKinnon and Anders Lee, so that's going to be a crazy first line, but they're freaking Jonathan Tay's <laughs> second line center. Okay, okay, I see you, San Jose. I see what you guys are trying to do. Um, Lindholm and Hamannick is a decent first line pairing, but it's going to come down to this. Malcolm Subban, uh, that might not cut it for you guys. If your defense plays well, then yeah. I guess you just need to score a lot of goals. St. Louis up next, and they have Jakub Vorchek, Kuznetsov, and Andre Palat. Did you know they're they're pretty well rounded across the board there? Defensively, John Carlson and Eckholm, Darnell Nurse, and then they kind of fall off. So they're three and three. So I'd say that's an average core. Jordan Binnington, if he plays well again for St. Louis, they could win repeat a Stanley Cup champion. So Tampa Bay kept Kucherov and went ahead and added Melkin, which is ridiculous, as well as Brian Getzlaff and Mike Stone. How did they get so many good players? Like they they're, they're three deep at center with three really good centers. Granted, they are older centers, but still good. And defensively, they're a well-rounded defensive core and hellebuck and that man tampa can still dominate this league so toronto up next and they definitely took a, maze, a massive hit so they get clayton keller eric Stoll, and marcia so 
But after that, kind of bad. Tyler Johnson, Richard Panic, like, yeah, whatever, Jasper Bratt. I don't like that at all. But they kept Tyson Berry, and they got themselves Drew Doughty. So Drew Doughty decided to go home. Um, defensively, they have a good core, though. They do have a good defensive core, but uh, Vasilevsky net, honestly, the, he might steal everything for everybody this year. Vancouver Canucks up next, and they took Austin Matthews to play with Ju uh, Jonathan Huberto and Anthony Mantha there. Uh, Michael Backlund there down the middle. So deep down the middle, uh, Jordan Cairo, so future center prospect. Aaron Ekblad, Shea Weber, Yusuf Valamaki, and Eric Gustafson. So a very good defensive core for uh, the Vancouver Canucks. The in net, not so much. Vegas Golden Knights up next, and they got Max Domi, Sebastian Ajo, and Kevin Fiala. And then it uh, falls off very fast after that. Like, I don't know why Evan Rodriguez is playing in second line center and he's not like okay whatever i don't know what you're doing uh, but they went ahead and got eric carlson and brent burns so that's i guess what their decision was after that the kind of team kind of falls apart and craig anderson yeah i don't think they're gonna have a good year winnipeg taylor hall dylan larkin and jeff skinner that is gonna be a stupid fast line tyler bertuzzi nuge and konecki Okay, definitely impressive there. Defensively, OEL and Goligoski. Okay, after that, it definitely falls off. But they have Dubnik and Nett, so hey, Winnipeg could be a wild card team. And last, the Washington Capitals. Um, Braden Point, Blake Wheeler, William Carlson. Okay, not terrible. Uh, pretty well averaged forward core. Defensively, Bufflin, Falk, um, Niskanen, or Heiskanen, sorry, Mira Heiskanen, and Adam Larson. Who do they have in net, though? Simeon Varlamov. So with Halak backing him up. So they definitely have a good goalie duo. I don't know. I don't see them making the playoffs, though. And last up is us. So we have Anze Kopitar, Barkov, Zuccarello, uh, Trocek, Nyquist, and Toffoli. So definitely a really good forward core there. Joe Thornton is our third line with Justin Williams and JT Miller. So definitely a very good forward core. Gio and Klinberg, uh, Edler, and Brandon Dillon. So defensive is over average as well. And Braden Holby with Neuwirth backing him up in net. Calgary could be a massive contender coming in this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to sim to the end of the season. Uh, we're going to go over season stats. And then we are going to sim the playoffs, see who wins that, and go from there. But now that we've seen the teams, comment down in the comment section who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, my money is on Anaheim just because of Ovi and Crosby on the same team. Um, I would love to hear what you guys have to say, though. So there you have it. There's the season done. And the Calgary Flames finished first over on the league, which I'm more than happy, more than happy with. Uh, the Minnesota Wild, their second right behind them. One point behind them, actually. Carolina, Toronto finished fairly well. Tampa Bay, Colorado, Winnipeg, Chicago, Anaheim, Columbus, Arizona, Washington, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Buffalo. That is your Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, so the And the Nashville Predators because of the weird... Eastern Conference uh, division there. So uh, New Jersey, Ottawa, Edmonton, the Islanders, the Rangers, the Bruins, Dallas, LA Kings, Montreal, Detroit, the Panthers, the Golden Knights, uh, Vancouver, St. Louis, San Jose is the bottom of the league. So it's absolutely incredible like how the sim works with the fantasy draft here. Uh, I think we finished with 52 wins on the season or 51. So the same as Minnesota, but that one extra overtime was able to give us the president's trophy there. Um, so let's, I want to see who the most scoring team was. So the Rangers. So that's so weird. They just had terrible goaltending. It was Rangers, Tampa, Chicago. Interesting. Um, so goals four per game average. The Rangers are putting almost up three and a half. Um, but they had the highest goals against, and that's, you can't have that. Buffalo also did, but somehow made the playoffs. So that's, uh, interesting how that worked out. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the player standings. So Nikita Kucherov absolutely killed it again. 108 points this year, 68 assists, 40 goals. That's an insane season. Uh, Melkin there, Stamkos, Pasternak, and we like it's crazy. Barkov put up 95. Crosby put up 95. 61 assists. Uh, how many goals did Ovechkin get is my question here. McDavid, 49 goals, 44 assists. Goudreau there had some good stats, um, and then we're kind of out of it there. Uh, let's look at goals. Let's look at goals. So McDavid won. He had 49 goals. Uh, Sagan right behind him. Where is Ovechkin, though? Like, I don't see Ovechkin anywhere on this list, and that doesn't make a lot of sense. He only had 33 goals. That's so weird. Uh, so the assist king of the year goes to Huberto, who put up 68 and Kucherov also had 68 right behind him. Morgan Riley there. So uh, who took the most shots on that? Tyler Sagan. Who had the highest shooting percentage? Um, highest shooting percentage over 10 games. Over 20 games. There we go. That's probably a little bit better. So uh, Jay Beagle played 62 games, took 46 shots, and 
the scoring about you know every four shots he took in that's impressive jason spets also had a really good shooting percentage there too on 134 shots so interesting Braden point though definitely the best uh 18 on 161 so that's how that goes let's get a look at the goalies now so Braden holpe won the most amount of wins 42 18 losses six overtime losses there's your goaltending statistics highest save percentage so we'll do 40 games because that's pretty much a starter anti rant at a 920 um and therefore the rest goals against average the highest is Jakob markstrom who had about three and a half but that's okay the islanders were terrible defensively um made the most saves jordan biddington uh, he made 2000 almost 100 more saves than jonathan quick that is awful uh, and he faced the most shots by almost 100 extra shots as well that's it's nuts who let in the most goals though Jacob Markstrom went 218. I mean, Bennington letting in 211 makes sense, but geez, that's that's nuts. And Morgan Riley is your defensive leader for points with 76. Rasmus Ristolainen had 67, and then that's how it follows suit. So we will see you guys after the Stanley Cup playoffs and after we crown a champion. So the Calgary Flames won the Stanley Cup, and I'm honestly being honest here. I took no intervention in that whatsoever. It was, it was the cup final itself was crazy because I was watching the sim as it was going. Um, so first round in the West, Colorado swept the jacket or swept the Jets, not the Jackets. Minnesota won in seven over call or over Chicago. Um, Arizona just had light work of uh, Anaheim there, and Calgary uh, beat Nashville in five. Going over to the East, Columbus beat the Capitals in five. Uh, Pittsburgh took the Canes in seven. Uh, Tampa Bay took the Sabres in seven and Philadelphia walked over the Maple Leafs. So going into the second round of the Eastern or the Western Conference final playoffs, um, Minnesota walked Colorado and Calgary walked Anaheim. Uh, Pittsburgh walked over Columbus and Philly put up a decent or Tampa Bay put up a decent fight against Philly, but they ended up going on to win it. So uh, in the in the conference finals, we had seven games. Both series went seven games. Calgary actually reverse swept Minnesota to go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Don't know what happened on the on the uh, Pittsburgh Philly end, but that would have been an in crazy Eastern Conference Finals. And then Calgary reverse swept Philly to win the Cup. I I'm not making that up. That actually freaking happened. It was nuts. I'm like, they, there's no way that they're going to do this. They went down 3-0 and they won the next four in the league. So Calgary won the Stanley Cup. Bring the Cup back to Calgary. Thank you, boys, for doing that. I appreciate it. I'll be at the parade. So the Art Ross went to Nikita Kucherov. He also took home the heart. Morgan Riley won the James Norris. Lady Bing went to Kucherov as well. So he's taken home three pieces of hardware so far. Calder went to White. A Con Smythe went to Justin Williams because he is Mr. Playoffs. It just makes sense. The Vesna went to Anti Ranta. The William N. Jennings went to Calgary's Braden Holpe. The Bill Masterson went to Sherrod. Jack Adams went to buffalo's coach flurry you won the jack adams good good for you uh the frank j selke went to ryan o'reilly the ted Lindsay went to nikita kucherov and the maurice richard went to connor mcdavid so nikita kucherov takes home four pieces of hardware uh we're just going to go back and we're just going to look at stanley cup being calgary because that is a great sight to see so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you thought uh did your team win i was expecting anaheim too and they got walked in the first round so hey anything can happen i am okay with this outcome so hopefully you guys did enjoy the video if you did definitely be sure to leave a like comment video ideas that you guys want to see done here on the channel uh going forward it can be anything crazy it doesn't matter how time consuming it is we'll make it happen i'm excited for this year i think that you guys should be excited for this year there's going to be a ton of crazy stuff coming so definitely be sure to subscribe if you haven't all right that i want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to come spend this with me hopefully you had fun hopefully this was a little bit of entertainment for you on uh whatever day that you watch this uh once again honestly can't thank you enough for spending time with me in this video and taking time out of your busy days to do so so thank you for watching everybody we'll see you guys next time